All right, here are the solutions to the worksheet from today in class, our system of linear equations worksheet. Um, the basic idea is you got four different problems, and I want you to solve them using each of the, the most recent two methods we've learned, our substitution method and our equation addition method. Um, I say use whatever the hell you want. Use this one or this one. Kind of do whatever you need to practice on. I'm going to do them all both ways, just so you have an example um, using both methods. So on this first one, maybe I'll first do it using the substitution method. Substitution. Um, so what you want to do when you're using the substitution method is look at these two equations and pick one of the two equations and one of the two variables that's easiest for you to solve for. Kind of weird that it's so wide open like that. Um, what I notice when I first look at it is this y hanging out by itself out here. It would be pretty easy for me to take this first equation and solve for y. right? I'd have to move this 13, but I have all the y's together on this side. There's no coefficient on the y. I think this would probably be the easiest for me to use. Um, the y down here is pretty close to being isolated also, so you could have used that one instead. You could also solve for the x in either of these two, but if you do, I think you'll end up with some fractions. right? If we solve for this x, we'd have to divide both sides by 2 at the very end. And I think we'll end up with some fractions there. Similarly, down here, we'd have to divide by 3 at the very end. Um, so if you want to avoid fractions, which I assume most people do, solve one of these two for y. Um, let's take the first equation, our 2x plus 5 equals 13 plus y. And let's solve that for y. The way we'll solve it for y is by subtracting 13 from both sides of the equation. Um, 5 minus 13 is negative 8. Um, and now what I have is y isolated. It's isolated on the right. Um, which screws some people up. Sometimes you're used to having it on the left. Uh, it doesn't matter at all what side it's isolated on. y equals 2x minus 8. I know what y is equal to now, um, which is key, because what I'm now going to do is take the other equation, which uh, I guess I can use a different color. Uh, my other equation started out as 3x plus y equals 7. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this other equation, 3x, but instead of adding y, I'm going to write what I just figured out y was equal to. So specifically, instead of writing y right here, I'll write 2x minus 8. And that's equal to 7. So again, 3x plus y equals 7. I just rewrote that here. The only difference is instead of writing the letter y, I wrote 2x minus 8. And the reason I can do that is because over here I figured out that y is 2x minus 8. So this equation right here, it's a little bit messy, but it only has one variable. It only has x's. So I can solve. Um, maybe first combine like terms. 3x and 2 more x is 5x. Um, so I want to get x's all by itself. I'd have to take care of this negative 8. To get rid of this negative 8, I'll add 8 to both sides of the equation. So if you add 8 to the left, now you just have 5x. If you add 8 to the right, 7 plus 8 is 15. So now I got 5x is equal to 15, but I don't want to know what 5x is equal to. I want to know what x is equal to. So divide both sides by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. So now I know that x equals 3 is the solution for the x coordinate. I just have to figure out what the y coordinate is. So when x equals 3, I've got to figure out what y is. To do that, you can use any equation that you have written here that has x's and y's in it. Any one you want. However, there is an easiest equation to use. Um, note that earlier in the problem, I already solved for y. I must have solved for y because I substituted for it. So I already have that y is 2x minus 8. So since I know what x is, I can just say that y, how should I write this? Let's do it this way. y is, and instead of 2x minus 8, I can say it's 2 times 3 because x is 3 minus 8. Um, in other words, y is equal to 6 minus 8, or y is equal to negative 2. So what I get for my solution is x is 3, y is negative 2. So really what I did is, I don't know if arrows will make this more or less complicated, um, started down this way, then went up here, and then went that way. Okay, so there's the substitution method. Let's do that again using the addition method. 
So if we're going to use the addition method, we want to first line up our equations. So what I mean by this is the second one has my x's, then my y's, then my equal signs, then my numbers. But the first one doesn't. It's got x's, numbers, equals, numbers, y's. So let's move some pieces around. Let's take that 2x plus 5 equals 13 plus y. And let's format it so it's formatted like the bottom equation here. So I want my x's on the left. I already got that. That's good. I also want my y's on the left. So let's subtract y from both sides of the equation and get 2x minus y plus 5 equals 13. So x's and y's on the left, and then numbers on the right is what I want. x's and y's are on the left. I want all my numbers on the right. So what I'm now going to do is subtract 5 from both sides of the equation and get 2x minus y is equal to 8. 13 minus 5 is 8. Now I have things all formatted correctly. I can say that my first equation is 2x minus y equals 8, and my second equation is 3x plus y equals 7. Everything's lined up. That's your first step. Your second step is to see if you need to multiply either of your equations by anything so that when you add them up later, something will cancel out. Um, we got kind of lucky here. We don't have to multiply these by anything because if I add them up right now, negative y and positive y will go away. So we'll see in our next example cases when that doesn't happen. But in this first one, things worked out kind of nicely. Um, we'll just add them up right now. 2x and 3x is 5x. Negative y and positive y just goes away. And 8 plus 7 is 15. So I have a one variable equation. 5x equals 15. If I divide both sides by 5, I got x equals 3. Kind of like what I got over here. Now that I know that x equals 3, I can take any equation up here, it's totally up to me, any one I want, um, that has x's and y's in it, and then solve that, plug in 3 for x and solve it for y. So you can use any one you want, um, it would be easiest. I kind of like this one here, this one's kind of simple. I just have plus 1y here. I think I'm going to take this equation, and I'm going to say, yeah, 3x plus y is equal to 7, but I know that x is equal to 3. So really I have 3 times 3 plus y that's equal to 7. And I'm going to try to solve this for y. Well, 3 times 3 is 9. So I got 9 plus y is equal to 7. I want y all isolated by itself, so I'd have to subtract 9 from both sides of the equation. 7 minus 9 is negative 2. And so what I get is x equals 3, y equals negative 2 is my answer. Which is the same thing I got over here. Nice. All right, now you just got to do that three more times on harder problems. Let's see how far I am. That was eight minutes. I'm going to try to do these next three a tiny bit faster just because I don't want this video to take forever for people. Um, next one, if we're going to use the substitution method, I have to solve one of these two equations for one of their two variables. Um, you have some freedom in what you do. I'm going to take the first equation and solve it for x. I'm going to say 2x minus 4y equals negative 8. I chose that because I do enough of these that I can kind of see some things that you may or may not be able to see. Um, by choosing solving for x here, I'll have to divide everything by 2, but since everything else is an even number, I won't end up with any fractions. If I had divided, well, if you chose anything else, you'd end up with some fractions, which is fine. You'll still get the right answer. It'll just be a little bit harder. Divide both sides by 2, and you get x equals 2y minus 4. So I chose the first equation, and I chose the variable x to solve for here. And now what I have to do is take my second equation, which is the 3x minus 2y equals 4. But instead of writing the letter x, since I know that x is equal to 2y minus 4, I'm going to write 2y minus 4. And I still got this negative 2y and this equals 4. So I copy this equation exactly, except instead of writing the letter y, I wrote Sorry, instead of writing the letter x, I wrote what I just figured out x was equal to. This equation is a mess. It's going to be a lot of work to solve. The good news is it only involves one variable. It only has y's. So I can solve it. First, let's get rid of the parentheses. Let's distribute the 3 in and get 6y minus 12 minus 2y equals 4. Then let's combine like terms. I got 6y and I got minus 2y. So 6 and minus 2 gives me 4 of these y's. Um, now let's isolate the y. So let's add 12 to both sides. 
and get 4y is equal to 4 plus 12 is 16. And then finally divide by 4 and get y is equal to 4. Now I have the answer for the y coordinate. To figure out the answer for the x coordinate, I take my equation. I should already have one that's solved for the other variable, x in this case, right here. And I know that x is equal to 2y minus 4. But I just figured out that y was equal to 4. So instead of writing y, I'll write 4. So really, x equals 2 times 4 minus 4. x is equal to 8 minus 4. Looks like x is equal to 4 also. A little bit weird that x is 4 and y is 4, but that's perfectly fine. That can happen sometimes. There's my answer. Let's do it again over here um, using the addition method. I'll color code these to try to make them easier to follow. Squeeze the addition method over here. Uh, let's see. So you started out with 2x minus 4y minus sorry, equals negative 8. And then the other equation, things are already lined up nicely. I got my x's, my y's, my equal signs, and a number. That's the good news. 3x minus 2y equals 4. And now what I got to do is stare at these two equations. Note that if you just added them up right now, you'd still end up with x's and y's. Nothing would cancel out. So I got to multiply one of these two equations by something so that when I add them in the next step, something will go away. This part's really hard. Um, the easiest way to accomplish that goal is to multiply the bottom equation here by negative 2. Why negative 2? Because I already have negative 4y up here, so I want positive 4y down here. To get positive 4y down here, I'd have to multiply by negative 2. So the first equation, will leave it alone. But the second equation, I'm going to multiply by negative 2 and get negative 6x plus 4y equals negative 8. So by choosing that negative 2 very carefully, I've set things up so that when I add these two equations together, the y's will go away. One of the variables will go away, y in this case. Uh, 2x plus negative 6x is negative 4x. Negative 4y plus 4y is nothing. Careful here, negative 8 plus negative 8, you might think that's 0, it's not. Negative 8 minus 8 more is negative 16. So if I divide both sides by negative 4, I get x is equal to 4. And now what I want to do is I want to pick any equation, whichever one I want, and change all the x's into 4's and solve for the y's. Uh, it really doesn't matter what equation you choose. I don't even know if any of them are really easier here. Um, I don't know, maybe let's choose this bottom equation, really, just because you have to choose one of them. Nothing really works out nicely. I got 3x minus 2y is equal to 4. However, I just figured out that x was equal to 4. So instead of writing x right here, I can write 4. And now I have a one variable equation. 3 times 4 is 12. So I got 12 minus 2y equals 4. Kind of running out of room here. Maybe I jump back up over here. A um, couple different ways you can solve this. One way would be to subtract 12 from both sides of the equation. That would give you negative 2y equals negative 8. So I subtracted 12 over here. These go away. 4 minus 12 is negative 8. And then divide by negative 2, and you get y equals 4. Sorry, I was kind of jammed down at the bottom of the page. I'll try to leave myself more room next time. No, we got the same answer, 4 and 4. All right, let's do more of these. Here's the third problem. 2x plus 3y equals 8. 3x plus 5y equals 13. This is a tricky one. Um, what you want to do using the substitution method is pick one of these two equations, doesn't matter which one you choose, and solve it for one of the two variables. I think no matter what you pick, you're going to get fractions. Unavoidable in this problem. On the quiz, I don't make it work out that way. On this problem, it's unavoidable. So, all right, choose the top equation, solve it for x maybe. So let's take that first equation, 2x plus 3y is equal to 8. Um, and let's solve this for x. 
So to solve this for x, I guess I'd have to subtract 3y from both sides. Get 2x equals 8 minus 3y. And then divide both sides by 2. 8 divided by 2, that's not too bad. That's just 4. Negative 3 divided by 2, that's just negative 3 halves. Fractions. Yeah. Okay, so we solve for x. Got fractions, but we solve for x. Now we take our other equation here, this 3x plus 5y equals 13. And we want to rewrite it, except instead of writing the letter x, I'm going to write what x is equal to. I'm going to write 4 minus 3 halves y. 3x plus 5y equals 13. This is a mess to solve. It's the bad news. The good news is just got one variable, y. So to isolate the y, I'd have to get rid of these parentheses. I'd have to distribute this 3 in. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times negative 3 halves is negative 9 halves. Where that comes from is you can think about this 3 as 3 divided by 1. And 3 divided by 1 times 3 over 2, if you just multiply straight across, you get 9 over 2. Plus 5y equals 13. So I got all my y's together here. Um, 5y minus 9 halves y, that's a little bit hard to figure out. Um, it's easier to figure out, well, let's move this 12 first. That 12 is just annoying me. Let's subtract 12 from both sides of the equation. Now I got all my y's together on this side and all my numbers over on this side. Okay, negative 9 halves of these y's plus 5 of these y's. That's why I got to figure out. Well, it's hard to add them together right now, but if you think about 5 is really 10 halves. Now we have a common denominator and we can add these together. Negative 9 halves plus 10 halves is just 1 half. So we get that 1 half y equals 1. Or if you multiply both sides by 2, you get that y is equal to 2. Substitution was difficult on this problem. Uh, we got that y is equal to 2. So now we take that and we look for our equation where x is solved for up above. Here it is. I got x is equal to 4 minus 3 halves y. I'll rewrite that, except instead of writing the letter y, I'll write 2 because I know that y equals 2. Uh, let's see. 3 halves times 2. You can think about this 2 as 2 over 1. 3 halves times 2 over 1 is 6 halves. In other words, 3. So we end up with pretty looking answers, x equals 1 and y equals 2. But to get there, it was really hard. We had to deal with these fractions, or at least this method of solving it gave us a bunch of fractions. There's our answer. Let's do it again with substitution and hope we get the same answer. Um, with substitution, well, these, these equations are already lined up. That's the good news. 2x plus 3y equals 8. X's, Y's equals numbers, that's nice. 3X plus 5Y equals 13. X's, Y's equals numbers. That's the good news. The bad news is it's going to be hard to multiply these equations by things to get them to cancel out. Right? If you think, say you want to get rid of the X's, you got to multiply everything in this top equation by something so that you end up with the same amount of x's on the top and the bottom, except one of them are negative. That's hard to do. It's hard to turn 2 into 3. You can do it with fractions, but since I avoid, assume people want to avoid fractions, a clever way to do it is to note that the least common multiple between 2 and 3 is 6. So in other words, I could make this 6x, and I could make this negative 6x, and then they'd go away. If I want to make this 6x, I better multiply the top equation here by 3. So that would give me 6x plus 9y is equal to 24. And that was multiplying by 3. Um, OK, now that this is 6x, I want this to be negative 6x. To make this negative 6x, I'd have to multiply this by negative 2. Multiply this by negative 2. Um, so 3 times negative 2 is the negative 6x that I was looking for. And then 5 times negative 2 
is negative 10y. And then 13 times negative 2 is negative 26. And note that by doing that, it was difficult. I had to multiply both of the equations, but I've gotten it into a form where if I add things up, the x's will go away. 6x plus negative 6x, nothing. 9y minus 10y is negative 1y. 24 plus negative 26 is negative 2. So if you multiply both sides by negative 1, you get y equals positive 2. I thought that was kind of tricky. Now what you want to do is take any equation you have above. It doesn't matter which one you use. Change all the y's into 2. Figure out what x is equal to. So let's take that very top equation, 2x plus 3y is equal to 8, and rewrite that, except instead of writing y, write the number 2. Because I just figured out that y was 2. So what I got is 2x plus 3 times 2 is 6 is equal to 8. 2x is equal to 2 if you subtract 6 from both sides. In other words, x equals 1 if you divide both sides by 2. What we end up with is the same answer, x equals 1, y equals 2. Different method of getting there. Okay, last problem. Man. If I remember right, I made the answers here fractions, so just kind of adding to the difficulty as we go. I want to start by using the substitution method. I got 4x minus y equals negative 1, and 2x plus 5 equals 4x plus y plus 1. Wow, okay, that second equation is a mess. I'm going to take that first equation, I'm going to solve it for y. So specifically, I'm going to say, if 4x minus y equals negative 1, I can envision a way to get the y all by itself. That doesn't seem too hard. And so I'll solve this one for y. Uh, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to add y to both sides of the equation because I'm eventually going to isolate y on the right-hand side here. So that's perfectly fine. You can isolate it on whatever side you want. Add y to both sides. Now add 1 to both sides. And what you get is y is equal to 4x plus 1. So my first step is to solve one of these two equations for one of its two variables. I chose the top equation and I chose y. You have some freedom in what you choose there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this second equation, 2x plus 5 equals 4x plus y plus 1. And everywhere I see the letter y, I'm going to replace it with 4x plus 1. So 2x plus 5 equals 4x plus and then instead of writing y, I'm going to write 4x plus 1. And be careful, we still have this plus 1 here. So this plus 1 went here, this plus 1 went here. Be easy to forget one of those plus 1s. What I now have is a big mess of an equation, which is often the case with substitution. Bad news, good news, is that it only has one variable, the letter x. So let's solve for that variable. Well, let's see here. Maybe I combine like terms first to try to make things simpler. Let's leave this 2x plus 5 alone, but on the right, I got 4x and I got 4 more x, so really I got 8x. I got 1 and 1 more, I really got 2. So here's my equation. I want to isolate the x's. Um, I think I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. The reason I chose to subtract 2x from both sides is because that is going to leave me with a positive number of x's here. Still don't quite have x's isolated here, but I'm getting pretty close. Um, to get this x all by itself, I'll subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. 5 minus 2 is 3, so I get that 3 is 6x. And now to get x all by itself, I'll divide both sides by 6 and get that 3 sixths is equal to x. Um, or if you simplify this fraction, 3 sixths is really just 1 half. Fraction for my answer x is 1 half, I want to know what y is. I come up here and I'm like, well, I know that y is 4x plus 1. So I take this equation right here where I said that y was 4x plus 1, and I rewrite it, except instead of writing the letter x, I write the number 1 half. Switch colors. Um, okay, y is 4 times 1 half. Think about this as 4 divided by 1. 4 divided by 1 times 1 divided by 2 is 4 over 2, which reduces to just 2, plus this one. 
y is equal to 3. So what I get for my answer is that x is 1 half and y is 3. Fractions, made that one kind of hard. Let's do it again, except now using a different method. Now let's use our addition method. So I got my two equations. The first one, I got 4x minus y equals negative 1. That one's formatted kind of pretty. Um, this one's not. I got x's, numbers, x's, y's, numbers. Let's take that second one. 2x plus 5 is equal to 4x plus y plus 1. And let's format that so it fits in this same x's, y's equals numbers. So my x is on the left, let's subtract 4x from both sides. If you subtract 4x from both sides, you get negative 2x plus 5 is equal to y plus 1. Subtracted 4x over here and subtracted 4x over here. Now all my x's are on the left, I want my y's on the left. So let's subtract y from both sides of the equation and get negative 2x minus y plus 5 is equal to 1. I wanted this y to be on the left, so I subtracted y from both sides of the equation. I'm almost there. X is y's equals numbers. X is y's, there's my equal. I just got to move my number to the right. Subtract 5 from both sides. Negative 2x minus y is equal to negative 4. Let's take that and put that up here. And what you'll notice is now things are lined up really nicely. Got my x's, my y's, my equals, my numbers. Okay, so you got your two equations. You want to do something to them so that when you add them together, one of the variables cancel out. Um, it's up to you. Some options on what you do here. Uh, you could multiply this top equation by 2. That would give you negative 4x minus 2y equals negative 8. Because then the x's will cancel out. Um, another option is you could... Leave this top equation alone and multiply this bottom one by negative 1. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll show you why in just a second. 4x minus y equals negative 1. I left the top equation completely alone. But then I took my bottom equation here and I multiplied it by negative 1. If you multiply this by negative 1, it becomes positive 2x plus y equals positive 4. I liked multiplying by negative 1 because it doesn't make the numbers any bigger. Um, but what it leaves me with is now I got negative 1y on the top and positive 1y on the bottom. When I add these equations up, what you'll see is that the y's will go away. 4x and 2 more x gives me 6x. Negative y and positive y, those cancel out. Negative 1 plus 4 is equal to 3. So I got 6x equals 3. That might look familiar. That's what we had over here. Divide by 6, you get x equals 3 sixths. In other words, x is equal to 1 half. We got our solution that x is equal to 1 half. Now what we do is we take any equation up here, whichever one you want, and solve it for y. Uh, let's see, here's one. Here's one where I have a positive 1y all by itself. Let's take that one, 2x plus y equals 4. And let's change the x into what x is equal to, 1 half. 2 times 1 half is just 1, so what I have is 1 plus y is equal to 4. Get y all by itself, subtract 1 from both sides, 4 minus 1 is 3, and what I get is that y equals 3. Same answer I had over here. So there are four problems, sorry for the length of this video, but hopefully going slow made it make more sense to people. Um, four different problems solved each of them in two different ways, so really we did eight problems there. In each case in red we used the addition method, aka the elimination method, um, and then over here in green and blue we used the substitution method. So I hope that helps people out. I'm on the video here.